Hey everybody, Donna Woods with Photonic Health, and we've got another fabulous version of Health Made Simple for you. Today, we're going to be chatting with Chris Huppy. She is, well, she's got lots of things behind her, but we met her um, through Casey LaPierre's uh, Applied Equine Podiatry Program. And Chris is uh, an advanced applied, diploma applied equine podiatrist so she has the same uh, same education level as brian does when it comes to horse feet and in addition to that she's also an instructor for the program which um i think there's only what three instructors or four instructors yeah i think actually only myself in the united states and then there's some overseas yeah so she's an extra special person, and we are so excited to have her here today. And one of the reasons that I decided to have a chat with her and introduce you guys to her is because she not only does she understand horses' feet inside out, upside down, backwards, front, back, everywhere, um, she is really about equine health and she has her own consulting business on horses. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah, I probably call myself more of a teacher and a coach than a consultant, but I'm with you. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, and, uh, and so, so we're going to jump right in because she has you know, Brian and I are super holistic. We're super natural. We're really about, um, particular about what we feed our horses. Um, and I think that says a lot. I've got three, I've got seven horses. Three of them are 27 and 28 years old and in fabulous health, knock on wood. Love it. Always knock on wood. Um, <laughs> and, and so just uh, chatting with Chris, like wanted to have her expand more on like what do you look for when you're feeding your horses and things like that and so we're going to jump right in and let's talk about first off um i love your horseshoe display in the back we're not about horseshoes however it's horse related so of course we automatically love it and horseshoes look fabulous on a wall so <laughs> love that that's amazing well, donna there's a little funny story about that and i'm not into horseshoes either actually um you know as an equine podiatrist we're very focused on developing health in the equine foot regardless of what you put on top of it. So I'm not for horseshoes and I'm not against horseshoes because it's just not about that. But um, in my practice, which, you know, I've had for about 15 years now, I've, I've certainly met horses that actually have to wear horse shoes as a result right. of what's happened to them over the years, et cetera. Anyway, um, when I was a little girl, I didn't have horses in my life. I didn't have a horse. I was not supported in that way. There was no one in my family and horses. And my mom would, I did, in fact, I didn't get my first horse until I was 42. My mom would drag me around to these um, flea markets because she's very into flea markets and antiques. And I started a little horseshoe collection back when I was a little girl. And um, I had nothing to do with horses, certainly nothing to do with horse feet. And then my mom passed a couple of years ago and I was going through the old homestead and in the basement of her home, which was built in 1790, super Old, oh my gosh. I found tucked away my horseshoe collection. And of course, you know, it, it spoke to me and I was like, holy crap. Like how does the universe right work? Right. Cause now right. I'm all into feet and horse feet. And it just, it was, it was such an aha moment for me. But anyway, my husband mounted it on this board for me. I just picked out the kind of different unusual ones. Um, they're all antique. And so thank you for noticing. That's, that's what that's oh. all about. That story just gives me goosebumps. I absolutely <laughs> love it. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that you got into horses as adults because actually I don't have a horseshoe collection. I did not collect them as a child. However, um, you know, I had a pony, I think from the age of two to four, and then we moved to the city. And so there went the pony. And I don't really recall that, but Brian and I actually got into horses as adults as well. So it was not neither one of us really grew up with them. So it's yeah, interesting. super cool. 
Yeah. And, and maybe that's why we're a little bit more passionate about it. Um, well, I mean, here's the thing, whether you get into horses when you're a kid or whether you get into them when you're an adult, we don't do a very good job of introducing people to taking care of and getting their horses or keeping their horses healthy. And so all of us running around kind of just do what we see being done either by our friends or maybe we're in a boarding barn and there's just a standard operating procedure that we all follow and we don't necessarily get education. And I saw that as such a huge faux pas, you know, like, what are we, what are we doing? How are we helping these horses that we've domesticated? So we both kind of got into these helping ways of once we realized what was going on. Correct. Correct. Now you, you, you do coaching, you do coaching. Tell me a little bit more about that. Like what is the, what is the foundation of your coaching program? So let me back up just one step because I think that the history kind of matters. So I yeah. was a nurse for 30 years. I don't even know if you know that. No. Um, no. Yeah. So I was a nurse for 30 years and I became very interested in holistic care because as an emergency department nurse, I saw so many people die who, by what we know in science and in the textbooks, should have lived. Right. And then I also saw people live who, based on everything we knew in the books, should have freaking died. Right. And I started to realize, like, there's there's much more going on here. There's something else going on here because it it doesn't fit what we know in science right. a lot of the time. And that kind of sprung board me into holistic care. And I, I'm kind of an extreme person. When I get into something, I really dive into it. And I actually went so far as to go to the University of Connecticut and get a graduate degree in holistic nursing. At oh, the cool. same time, I got a horse and like many of us, I didn't know what I was getting. And right. I saw a horse, I loved him and I bought him sight on scene really. And I found myself with a handful and I went and I did what everybody told me to do. Right. And I called the vets and I had the trainers and I did the different bits and my horse's particular issues were anxiety and behavior, but there were some physical things going on as well. And nothing was, was helping. Right. And I kind of ended up putting things together, two and two together, and starting to go off on my own using holistic, more natural alternatives. And my horse started getting better. So this yeah. went on for several years, very yeah. painful, very expensive, very heartfelt, yes. lots of bad situations. But out of that came this beautiful unfolding of understanding what the horse needs. Now, simultaneously, I became an applied equine podiatrist really out of my own needs to help my horse yep. and got very, very involved with that. And so I started that practice 15 years ago and a couple of years ago now, about two and a half years ago, I quit nursing a hundred percent altogether. And I just now work with horses. And the reason for that is because I saw the need and it broke my heart. So at that time I put together uh, a program. It's a 16 work week coaching program where I work with people to help them understand whatever issues they're having with their horse. It might be lameness. It might be a problem with their behavior. It might be anxiety, skin issues, digestive problem, colic, um, very vague, inconsistent problems. Like, I don't know what's wrong, but something's definitely wrong. And right. I started to help people understand. And I packaged together in this program, how to peel back the layers of that and right. start looking at things like, how do I develop health instead of how do I dress this particular physical mm -hmm. manifestation that I see, which might be the lameness or the colic or the whatever. Sure. And so I put together an online program that is the teaching and is the lessons. And then I work with them every single week 
in this kind of a manner so that we can address things that deal with individuals so that people can really relate it to their own particular horse because every horse is different and every horse situation is different there's Absolutely. always a way to build health in your horse whether you're boarding whether you don't think you have the time these are not difficult maneuvers but they make a big difference in your horse's health and that makes a big difference in your horse's happiness Absolutely. I, I, I am just absolutely blown away our similar paths because, you know, our first horse, my first horse is a three day old Appaloosa cross. Three days? Three day old. Yeah. We bought her when she was three days wow. old. Wow. Yeah. We didn't bring her home until she was four months and everybody said oh yeah four months old is plenty of time it's old enough blah 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 and they didn't we, like it you know and 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 so our, i and and that horse literally changed our life like if if that one simple purpose had not occurred like you and i would not be sitting here talking today gotcha like, got it yeah you know like she's the one that you know because like you said we didn't know any better. We were brand new. So, you know, we had her at a boarding stable and we were doing what everybody else was doing and to what everybody told us to do because we thought that they knew what they were doing. And, you know, that wasn't the case. And then because of that, she developed behavior issues, which led us to Pirelli, which led us to red light therapy, which led us to where we are today, which led Brian to, you know, the need yeah. that uh, you know, we can't talk about horse health without looking at the feet. Right. Right. It, it's, they're all, it's all connected together, you know, it, and so that's what led Brian to, you know, the equine podiatry program. And so it, it's, it, it's and, just you know, so amazing. I, it is amazing. I, I believe very, very strongly in the universe orchestrating things and, that things happen the way that they should. And, you know, I talk to people every single day who have problems with their horses. Some of them are right. small and some of them are huge and life-threatening. And in every single one of those cases, all of those people, men and women, their intentions were good. They wanted yes. to do the right thing. Yes. They just didn't know what the right thing was. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. We're firm believers in that. So, um, so I'm going to jump right in um, and as a professional in this, because it's a pretty specific, like I, I, I'm sure you find the same thing. Brian ends up doing consults on feed and what to feed and mm -hmm. nutrition and body work, body work stuff as well. That's like primarily what our clients are is, you know, we're typically the last resort. They've tried mm -hmm. everything that their regular horse friends have tried and spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and the horse keeps getting worse and then they finally call us and then we go out and we try to get them pointed in the right direction um Same. so what are so as a professional in this market um what questions do you find yourself answering the most well most people who come to me come to me with a problem not everybody some people want to learn to take a holistic approach with more natural tools and that's great i can help them but the majority of people come to me with a problem with their horse and the thing that strikes me is they're always wanting a thing to fix the problem that they're having they want a supplement they want a behavior they want uh, a different diet. They want something. They want a thing to fix whatever they're seeing. And I always find myself having to, or given the opportunity, I should say, to help them understand the bigger picture. The reason that you have the thing, the, the physical manifestation that you're concerned right. about, the reason we're talking is most often unless it's an acute problem, it is most often a, 
an accumulation of things that have occurred over a long period of time that you've had your horse, or maybe that someone else had the horse before you did. In other words, the things that you're seeing now came out of years and years of accumulation. And there isn't, I'd love to give you just one thing. I'd love to say, go get this supplement, but it doesn't exist. And that's why you haven't found it. There isn't a thing, right? There's so many areas of our horse's health care that because we all do it, we think it's normal. We think it's the right answer. We think it's the proper thing to do. We don't recognize that it's not the correct thing because it becomes normal for us. It's, it's just the only thing that we know. We don't even recognize it as being a problem. So for example, somebody will say to me, well, my horse has had thrush the whole time that I've had him. I've had him for five years and he's had thrush. And, and the person I got him from said, he's always had thrush. We can't do anything about that. They think it's normal. Right. And I have to help them understand. And why is he lame? <laughs> exactly. That's and and I, have like, to, oh. I have to help them understand. Thrush isn't normal. It's a right. symptom. It's a right. symptom of what's going on inside your horse. It speaks right. to the immune system. It speaks to the digestive system. It speaks to the diet. It speaks to the stress and the challenges that your horse is under. It has nothing to do with the environment that it's been raining. That's the question I get is what's the thing? And I'll be like, there isn't a thing. There's an accumulation of issues that you think are normal because they're common, but they're not normal at all. And we need to look at all of them as signs and symptoms that we can respond to. Right. Right. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, you know, it's like, I think there's a meme out there that says there's no such thing as a free horse, or if somebody uh, is offering, you know, willing, great horse, trail safe, does everything, and it's got a really cheap price tag, there's usually a reason why. And it's probably because they've got some unresolved, well, behavioral issues, or health issues that the people just haven't been able to sort out. And they're sort of, they've, come to the end of their education and they don't want to continue it any further. And so they just move the horse along. For sure. And it's so interesting when I work with people, one of the things, one of my initial things I work with people on is their goals, because I find as horse partners, we're not very clear with what we want the outcome to be. And when you don't have clarity, you can't work towards anything. So it's it's oftentimes the first step for me. And it weeds right. those people out because when they realize there's an answer, but they have to put a little effort in to resolve the problem, they then have to make the decision of whether or not they're willing to put the effort in. Right. And a lot of people aren't, and some people are, and I I have to respect that. We're all in a different place in our journey. No judgment. That's cool. Let's just get clear on it. Because if you can't, if you're not willing to help the horse, then maybe there is a better solution. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. We've encountered those situations as well. And sometimes those are really tough conversations to have. Yeah. And unfortunately, I I say, unfortunately, but not really like, um, you know, we, we've had to have them and, you know, and sometimes I think that's one of the things in the horse world, you know, mainstream horse people don't talk about the energetic aspect of it and the emotional aspect of it and the spiritual aspect of it. And, you know, for Brian and I, like they're absolutely that like that that that's what they are and so um and if people aren't willing to look at that that's okay that's okay that everybody's like you said everybody's on their own path so yeah. um so cool i am cl- like that is so awesome i love that that is absolutely amazing amazing um, so <laughs> if you could provide our audience like with maybe two or three tips or things that they could unbury, um, like Mm -hmm. they could implement at home, what would they be and how would that impact them? Okay. Well, it's going to be super hard for me to boil it down to two or three, but I will follow the instructions and I will do that. Um, 
I'm going to pick up from my first one. I'm going to pick up on something you just said, and that is the mental, emotional, spiritual side of horses and the impact, understanding, recognizing and understanding that that exists and that it's important that actually has translates to and greatly affects physical health. So the first tip would be recognize that your horse's physical health is much more than just physical. So again, you're looking for the supplement, you're looking for the answer. It's not a supplement and it's a bigger question than that. Our horses are beings with souls and we if we're not addressing the other aspects of them and we just look at the thrush and the lameness and the digestive issues, we have less of an opportunity to heal them and get them healthy and therefore happy because we're ignoring these major aspects of the horse. So I am totally into vibrational medicine and how that affects our horses and what we vibrate, what we put out and how that actually gets synced up with our horses. Our horses are like tuning forks. You know how tuning forks are hit. So yep. you hit one, others in the room will sync up with it. That's how our horses are. So what you're energetically bringing out to your horse, your horse will absorb and receive and sync up with. And if it's a low vibration, that actually over time translates to physical manifested problems like lameness and colic and itching and all sorts of issues. So we have to recognize the energetic aspect of the horse and then our own energetic aspect and how that affects our horse. So that'd be the first thing, which is kind yeah. of a whole subject in and of itself. Oh, but I can't, absolutely, leave, this absolutely. I, I can't yeah. leave this call without talking about it because I would be remiss. That's that's huge. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to get to a more physical aspect and meet people where they are. If you want your horse to be healthy, I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what your physical manifestation is. If you want your horse to get healthier, you need to start with the digestive system. That's yeah. the root of physical health. Now, dealing with the digestive system and not dealing with the mental, emotional stuff to me is not the full picture. You, you need to address both of them. But if we just want to talk physical for a minute, you've got to start with the digestive system, whether you have thrush, whether you have bucking and bolting, whether you have colic. So yeah. all health begins with the digestive system and the health of the digestive system is based on what you put in it. Diet. Yeah. So. Diet is the foundation of the digestive system. The digestive system is the foundation of health for your horse. So stop looking at your horse's body parts, not meaning to be too yeah. passionate or aggressive here. Sorry, I lost myself for a minute. I do that because it's so, so. No, no, that, uh, you're absolutely fine. <laughs> stop you're looking absolutely. at your horse's feet, you know, stop looking at the behaviors and start right. looking at the digestive system when you start looking for answers. Right. So that would be my second tip. And then I think um, I'm having to pick and choose here, but I'm thinking that the next thing that I would say, because people can be really actionable about this really fast, like today, start looking at the toxins that sneak into your horse's body on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, let me be the first to tell you, we live in a very toxic world, right? The air we breathe, the water that we drink, you can't remove all the toxins from your horse. And that's okay, because the, the horse has multiple systems to take care of that. Six, right. as a matter of fact, you know, they're very good at it, but the problem becomes where, as I said earlier, we've adopted policies and procedures that are above and beyond, and then we think they're normal, that actually negatively affect our horses and the toxins become, there's a toxin overload. For many, many years, your horse will compensate, 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 compensate for all the chemicals that you're dumping into his system. And eventually there'll be at a point where he can't compensate anymore because the filtering organs start to get gunked up and they don't run very efficiently. And then you start to see physical manifestations of toxin overload come out in other ways. So when I talk with people about this, oftentimes they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm totally on board with that. 
I yep. only give apples for treats, etc. But toxins are super sneaky in the year of 2022. Right. And they, they're getting into your horse into in ways that you're not completely cognizant of. So I would say start to look for those ways. Really right. look at your diet, look at the treats as also part of your diet. If you're giving peppermint candies, you're throwing toxins into your horse. If right. you are mindful of things that get absorbed by the skin, right? We have medications that are absorbed by the skin that are yep. given by inhalation. It's the same with our horse. So right. as you're using chemicals around your horse for things that your horse interacts with, for your horse's bedding, for your horse's feed, for your horse's blankets, all of that gets absorbed through the skin. And there's all these sneaky little ways that toxins yep. get into our horses every single day that we're not aware of. Toxins, create inflammation, inflammation creates disease. In fact, inflammation mm -hmm. is a factor in every single disease process known to man, whether the toxin or the inflammation came first or whether the disease came first is the chicken or the egg. And you know what? Who freaking cares? It doesn't right. matter. The, right. the point is reduce inflammation in your horse by reducing toxins that are getting into the system in very sneaky little ways, 365 days a year. And I'm going to add on to that. We're going to reduce inflammation by not giving them more chemicals. A hundred percent. There's so many natural tools out there. You guys are yeah. experts in one of them. Yeah. So many. And you know what? I focus on tools that Horse partners, I don't call them horse owners in my practice. I don't like that term. Horse partners um, can employ themselves. And that's why I love Photonic and all the work you do, because I don't want to put horse partners in a position where they need to go out and hire professionals. They're hard to find, they're hard to evaluate, mm -hmm. and they're very expensive. So I focus, which is why I represent Photonic, I focus on things that people can do themselves to help their horses. Right. And there's yeah. so many. We there, don't there's so me. many. There's so many. Like there's so many. like there's so many. And all of them are good, right? All there, of them are good. There's so many different ways of utilizing vibrational medicine and yeah. and whatnot that they're like they're, you know, and that's part of, you know, in my own healing journey. Um, you know, I have encountered just about every type of therapy out there mm -hmm. and you know i'm super energy sensitive and so like mm -hmm. i know immediately like i can just um you know i'm very empathic and i just feel things in my body like right away so it's one of those things like you know they go did did you feel that or is it working or what, what did you think and i go yeah i didn't feel a whole lot but Okay. Um, but, but that doesn't mean that somebody else isn't going to feel it. It just happens to be that, you know, I, the vehicle that my soul lives in is yeah. super sensitive to all of that. Yeah. So, um, and that's what I love about that. And I really, really love what really connected um, was that you're talking about toxins and that you know, most people don't realize that our skin is our largest organ. And if it absorbs, if we put something on it, if we put something, spray something onto our horse, that is a chemical that is getting absorbed into the body and the 100%. body has to process it. And um, it's, you know, you're giving things that are designed to kill, right? Right. Right. And you're, 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 giving them to your horse, not with a bad intention. It just, it just goes back to what we were saying in the beginning. We weren't taught and right. what we've done, we've done so much that it's actually become normal right. and it's not normal at all. And yeah. there are so many alternatives out there that actually not only are not harmful, but may be actually therapeutically helpful to the horse. Correct. So this is Correct. helping to raise awareness of options and people will choose the yeah. better option when they have it, they just don't know they have options. Right. They don't know what they don't know. Right. They don't know and, what they don't we know. We don't either. You know, I'll be on this journey for yeah. the rest of my life. Oh, and I'll continue to learn. Absolutely. Every time we go out to work on a horse, we learn something new. I mean, there are, absolutely. there are greatest teachers. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I love the fact, again, I, I'm a huge proponent of 
toxins and eliminating toxins. And, you know, we live in Florida, so we have a bit of a little bit of a unique situation. Um, I shouldn't say unique, but like not typical, like of the colder climates where we get, we get heat and humidity nine months out of the year. Yeah. And so a lot of times we'll run into horses that have just a toxic, a, a mycotoxin overload, you know, yeah. and, and sometimes my horses too. I mean, we feed them like oral, all holistic, organic, you know, they don't get chemicals put on them at all. Yeah. Um, they live as naturally as entirely possible and it works really well for us. But every, you know, like this year happens to be an incredibly hot and humid year yeah. and there's toxins in the air in a humid environment. Yeah. You can't eliminate putting toxins into your horse. So you just try to control what you can and exactly. find alternatives. And it's you know, like, like I said, you know, living in that environment where you guys are dealing with um, flies and issues almost year round. Right. Imagine right. the difference on the impact of the horse if right. you're using something chemical versus something natural. Correct. Oh, correct. Like uh, people that live here, um, they they come and they go, well, tell me about your horses. And then I'll point out, like I said, my three girls and like one's 28 and there's two that are 27. They look like they're 16, 17, 18. And they're like, okay. what? They're, they're how old? They're how old? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like once you, once you understand, you know, and right. for me, we explain to people, how do you, how do you make sourdough starter? Do you know how to make sourdough starter? Do I personally? Yeah. Tell you the truth. I'm not a kitchen girl. So I would have to say no, most, to be honest. Most horse, most horse women aren't. So that's okay. Um, you literally take some flour, doesn't matter if it's wheat, oat, doesn't matter. Put some flour, put some water in it, set it out on your countertop, and it needs to be in a warm environment, you know, like, a, and in a couple of days, it's going to start to ferment because of all of the yeast and the bacteria in the air. <laughs> That's great. That's a great illustration. Right. Yeah. So when and then we explain that a lot. So then we, we go. So your horse lives outside, even if it's in a stall, yeah. it's still living outside and it's yeah. getting exposed to all of these mycotoxins. Yeah. So even, you know, so you just have to know what you're dealing with. And I love right. the fact that your coaching program um, or mentoring program yeah. uh, really guides people through, hey, this is it. Yeah. Like, these are the pillars. This is what to look for. These are the strategies. And if we can get to the root cause of it, we can cut it off at the pass. And you can, I'm assuming your people are much happier because they have somebody to go to because they have a guide. They're, yeah. saving, they're actually saving money. Yeah. Because they're not just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and hoping that it sticks. Yep. yep. Um, so they're more relaxed and happier and their horses are getting better. Oh my God. We've had some absolutely phenomenal, amazing results. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you're in business and the most frequent way that you get clients is through referral. Yes. And I, I'm so blessed yeah. and grateful to say that, that that's my situation because this stuff matters. And yep. unless somebody shares and holds you accountable and coaches you through because listen, information is not the problem. We live in a world of almost too much information. It's right. not that it's not out there. It's just that people don't necessarily know how to pluck it out and pull it together and then create better um, habits and steps for themselves because we're human and we've got a lot of things going on. There's an accountability factor that I found people need in order to really be successful. Yes. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Chris, so how can people get in? Like, I love your program. 
It's Thanks. amazing. I love like Brian and I and Photonic Health were so in the line with what you are doing. And we're so excited that you are out there helping spread the word. Um, Thank you. I'm excited about your work too. And I feel like we're marching along, helping yeah. who we can, when we can. I, I love you, what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do too. We do too. Um, so how can people like, I'm sure, and I'm sure that people are going to want to get in contact with you. How can they get in contact with you? Where can they find you if they've got questions? Yeah, I'd love that. So I'll give you two quick, quick, easy ways. My email address is chris at chrishuppy.com and it's C-H-R-I-S. So you can just email me chris at chrishuppy.com. H-U-P-P-E. And um, my Facebook page is called Master Your Horse's Holistic Health Care. I'll say that again. Master Your Horse's Holistic Health Care. And uh, once you join my group, which has several thousand people in it, we do a lot of talking and teaching and discussing and helping people work through. I give a lot of classes. This summer, I held a five-day Happy Hoof Summer Camp, which was super well attended and people were just really excited about. Um, I have a, and um, so the best thing to do is either just shoot me an email or hop in my group and that way we're connected. You can private message me or we can talk through the group that way. Master Your Horse's Holistic Healthcare. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been so much Thank fun. You. We're going to need to do it more often. <laughs> it has. Thank you so, so much, Donna, for chatting with me this morning. This was a blast. Yes, you too. And thank you.